Hey guys, today we're going to do some troubleshooting for the Your Home 6550 Pro. Um, there's just been a few things that um, different people are experiencing and stuff like that, so I'm just going to go through each one at a time and um, hopefully if any of these problems you're having, this will get you up and running. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing um, I want to go through with you is the rotary switch on the back of the control box. The uh, rotary switch, um, there's a, a zero and a one, and uh, typically uh, the zero is off and the one is on in most cases. In this case, if you first get your machine and the X axis is running okay, but it will not go X and Y, it's most likely your switch back here. And um, this one, unfortunately, happens to be reversed. I'm not sure why it came this way. It will be corrected in the next batch. But uh, the O is actually on, the zero is on, and the one is actually off in this case. So if you look back here and yours is on uh, the zero, then it actually has activated the rotary and it has disabled the two, or the, the Y stepper motors, so it won't go forward and backward. So just switch it over to the one and then that will turn it off, turn the rotary output off and then it should re-engage your stepper motors. So um, if you're having that problem when you first turn it on, definitely check your switch, make sure it's on the one and then the rotary will be off and your stepper motor should run. Okay, our next one is the air assist. Um, some may or may not, I know I had a little bit of problem with mine. When you first turn the pump on, you may notice there's no air coming out of here. So basically, uh, what it is, is there's a valve here that allows, uh, you can actually close it off or you can let a little bit of air on, through or you know a lot or whatever. And I pretty much have mine opened up most of the way, but I'll show you here how to adjust that. So right here, you're going to notice you're, you have a little inside nut right here. And what you're going to do is you're going to loosen this. And then you're going to open up this valve here, the valve bolt. And you'll notice when I open mine, you now can hear the air coming out. And that will fix your problem if it's not coming out. Now you can open it up somewhat far. Be careful because it'll come out. Like that's opened up pretty far and then all you do is just tighten this down snug so it won't move and you can actually adjust the air pressure from the pump if you want it more or less but so that's how you do that if you uh, are having any issues with the air coming out make sure that you uh, open up this little nut right here or this little bolt coming out that's kind of like a, a, an adjuster but since you have it on the back of the pump you won't need that part of it. Um, while I'm here, real quick, if you notice the wobble here, what you do is, I'm going to switch the camera over here. When you move your Z-axis, or your, yeah, your Z-axis up and down, you have a set screw here. What I kind of do is I kind of hold up a little bit, and then you tighten this. Once you tighten that up, it can't go anywhere, and it's snug. And, but just don't forget, you have to loosen that again and to, uh, to allow the Z-axis to move up and down. And that's pretty much it for that one. Okay, so the next step is going to be, we're going to check the height of the, um, the air assist, uh, the gap between your air assist head and the, um, and the laser itself. So you have your height um, cylinder here, and pretty much, as you know, this, you know, you take off your shield, and then you put this under it, and you screw that, you know, roll it down until it hits it, whatever. Well, I want to show you this gap here on the, um, on the air assist. What you have here is you have about, it's supposed to be about a three millimeter gap. I'm not sure what um, everybody has. Let me see if I can zoom in here a little better so you can see. Obviously, if you're looking at yours, you can see it. Um, and I'll show you what you need. You need about a three millimeter gap. And if you're not sure, if you just pop, uh, push down on the blue, um, 
clip here and then pull your tube out if you can like that push get a push down on the blue and then pull it at, at the same time and you undo this screw and then this screw here this should come right off and this does not have stoppers up there and I'm not sure why it doesn't but it doesn't but it should be about um, three millimeter so you got some sample blocks in and um, these are 1 8 inch which are uh, three millimeter, but these are just a little bit thinner. If you have a, a, a eighth inch piece of plywood, you can use that, or just use one of these that you got the sample cards. And what I'm recommending is to put this back on. As you can see, it'll go all the way up, but that's not where we want it. You want to, if you just stick this card in here. Whoops, let me loosen that a little bit. Stick this card in here. That's about the gap, maybe down, just so that card's loose a little bit. So if you ever have to take this off to clean your lens. Um, you can just kind of remember, maybe I use this car seat like there's like very, very little play in here. Um, and that's about three millimeter. Now I did make some of these little, um, little U-hook things that I use for spacers. This one's three millimeter and I actually put this in here. Um, unfortunately we don't have these in all the machines. For the next batch we may, um, but as you can see I just do three millimeter and then I just pull that out and that's the space. And if you look here, um, this pretty much goes in there a little bit, a little bit loose. But so if you're having any problems, like if you're burning and it's just not crisp and not coming to a point, just check your gap here. See if it's three millimeter. Um, mine actually came with 5.45 millimeter. I don't know why, but it did. And so I moved mine up a little bit. And yeah, that helped. So. If, if you're having any issues with it burning like that, just double check that. Sometimes in manufacturing, things get, you know, not set perfectly. And then you can use your, you know, cylinder height thing and um, adjust it down where you need to adjust it to. So again, about three millimeters. It, don't do less than three. If you had to do like three, a little bit more than three, that's okay. But um, right about three is right about good where you want it at. And then that should get you set. And then just put your tube back in. Just push down and then you're good to go. Just like that. Okay, so one other thing I want you to check. Um, if your machine does not seem to be running, um, we, uh, we've only ran into one or two times with this, but I just want to bring it up is your second Y axis motor over here, not the one with the dual motors, but the, the single one over here on the left side. Um, if it jitters or anything or moves and doesn't seem to move correctly, like it should be quiet moving. And if it's making a noise or it's jittering or you're not getting a good circle or anything, there is a clip here. And this is the clip that uh, we use to connect up, coming from the harness that goes up underneath and it goes over and connects that motor. Um, our techs have found that sometimes putting this in, if you see the pins here, the four pins, sometimes one of them will get out of a line and not actually go into the hole or get pushed back. Make sure that all four pins are still sticking out and that when you put it in there, they all go into the holes nice and smooth like this right here. It's just nice and, nice and smooth like, whoops, like this right here. And then once it's in and it clips. So if you have that, try that, take this apart and make sure it's seated good and see if that corrects your issue if you're having that issue and um, that but well, we have found that occasionally so uh, again if that side chatters or having any time issue with that motor just double check this make sure that it's on right no problems and uh, hopefully if that's the issue hopefully it'll, it'll fix it for you Okay, so we're going to go on to one of the important ones. We have, um, as you know, this has the uh, dual Y motors, and then you have four rollers on each side here, and it's really important that those rollers are set correctly. And um, if you've not done it before, or if you're not familiar with how they have to be, I'm going to walk you through how to make sure they're what, how they need to be set, and you can check them while you have the machine apart. So I'm gonna change my camera views and zoom in and show you how I would go through. There's two nuts on each side and I'm gonna show you how to adjust one of them um, to make to get it loose so it's incorrect 
and then how to correct it. And you can actually go through if you want and just double check them. I mean, even if it feels like it's correct and just double check it, they are what they need to be. So what we got to do is you just take, there's a rent or there's a, a, a nut here and a nut here. And when you turn this, you're going to notice the top nut here moving with it. And like I can move this now because I loosened it. And what you don't want is this wheel to be able to turn with your, with your hand. So if you just keep turning it, you're going to notice this is now I can just spin this freely and you don't want that. So you can continue going the same way or you can just come back a little bit until it stops spinning. Like mine's hit, just hitting the frame now. And I'm going to come a little bit more and now it's pretty snug. But I'm going to come a little more. You don't want it tight, but you want it so that you can't turn it with your hand so it's pretty stiff. You know what I mean? And you don't want, you want when you move the, the gantry, you don't want it to be shifting. So I'm going to just double check this. Make sure that, so I can loosen it again and then just snug it in, just so it's pretty snug. And then you do the exact same thing for the one on the back. So if you're not sure, just loosen it until you can spin it. And then keep turning it until it stops spinning. And then you'll feel it just get a little bit snug. And then you can't turn either one of them. And then, as you can see, the uh, they'll run together and there's no play. So do the exact same thing on the other side here. And mine are a little bit tight already on this side, so I'm gonna um, definitely double check these. And this one feels like, I think this one's really tight. And, um, you know, oh yeah, so now I, now I can just spin it. So it actually wasn't that bad. So I'm gonna come back a little bit till the stuff. So right now it's just starting to rub on the frame. And I'm gonna go a little more, and that's pretty good. It won't, it won't I can't really turn it now with, you know, freely. Same thing back here. I'm going to loosen it a little bit. Oops. And then I'm going to come back until it's just snug on the frame there, just like that. And then as you can see, now I can't move any of them. Oh, I can move this one actually. And so I adjusted that one. I guess I sh you should check that one. Let me see if I can go a little bit, whoops, a little bit more. Just like a little bit. That's it until it's nice and tight. And now, as you can see, it's gonna run nice back and forth, no, no play in it. So as you can see, it's running beautiful. There's no play in it, nothing going back and forth. And it's really important for, you know, uh, for the accuracy of what you're trying to carve. So hopefully if you have any issues with that, that'll get you straight. Again, make sure you double check uh, the two on each side and, um, if you think it's too tight, then just loosen it. And then as soon as you can spin the wheel, then just kind of snug it back up till you can't spin it and, uh, and go from there. And, and how you'll know is when you can just move nice and neat. When you move this, not one side of the other goes its own way. They're, they're, they go um, together. And that's it. Okay, our next troubleshooting is going to be for your rotary. So back here you have your rotary switch. When the rotary is on, it enables the Y-axis uh, power um, out through this plug over here, and it uh, disables your Y-axis motors. And uh, when you turn it off, it turns the power off to here and then enables your motor. So of course it has to be off when you're using your laser, but when you want to use the rotary, this has to be on. Now. So it come with a cable you got for your rotary. Now this cable, you just plug it into here. Just plug it in, snaps right in, no problem. If you have the TLC version one, this will work right out of the box, no problem at all. If you have the TLC version two or the Yora Rotate, you have to make a minor modification to the wire. It, um, there, it's just different and it's actually pretty easy to do. You have your two, uh, wires um, in the center you have six pin and you have four on you know four wires and there are two in the center those two wires need to be swapped they just need to be pulled out and put into each other's uh, each other's holes so I'm going to show you how to do that it's pretty easy um, you can use uh, a, a little exacto knife or a little screwdriver uh, I've even used my little cricket booger but um, I find the best to use something really thin like an X-Acto knife or 
if you have an eyeglass repair set, that little flathead screwdriver in there, all you gotta do is get right up under that plastic clip and you just gotta pry it up a little bit so you can pull the wire out, that's it. And then put the other one in, no problem at all. But it's small enough to get right in there and I'll show you how to do it right now. Okay, so what you have here is you have, you have six pins but you have four wires and see the center two. If you have the uh, silver uh, the uh, uh, face into you and you're looking at the center two, these two wires right here need to be swapped. So they need to come out and go in this one and this one needs to come out and go into this one. So the best way to do this will be to uh, maybe expand these a little bit so you have a little more playroom. Don't pull them out of there just yet. And um, yes, I have dirty thumbnails. And so uh, what you're gonna do is you can use an X-Acto knife. Sometimes I'll use a little screwdriver to pry that up. Um, I find something a little small um, if you just put it on, these are little clips right here, and these are what's holding in. If you just kind of get underneath it there a little bit, don't stab yourself. You can use any, like that, I just lifted it up. Now that wire should come right out, and you can see it's coming out. And so what you got to do is remember where that one is, and then do the exact same thing with this one. So I'm going to pull this one out now. Just kind of put that under a little bit. You know what else is good? A pair of eyeglasses, a uh, little screwdriver set. If you have one of them, those little flathead. If you could just get under there, just don't cut yourself. There we go. Just so it lifts up, and then you're gonna pull this out. Now, now that this is pulled out, what I'm gonna do is just pull it out and put it right in the one next to it. So just move it right over and push it in until it goes all the way up, and then take this one and push this one. Now, if you're looking at this, there's the top of it, you have that little clip. That has to go to the top facing you. So um, I'm gonna push this in here, like so. Push it all the way in. If it doesn't go in and snap in, then you probably have it the wrong way. So push it in and make sure that it is all the way. Let me see here. Did I say that right? Yeah. Oops, get it in there, just take your time until it snaps right in there. Mine doesn't want to go stay in. So if you have that problem, there it goes, now it's in now. So if, I was gonna say, if you have that problem, that little clip on top, you can always raise it up a little bit, but that's all you have to do is you have to swap those wires. And now if you'll notice, you'll see the cross here in my wires and that they are the opposite. Definitely make sure you put them two in the center, not in any of the other ones. So what you'll end up is something just like this. And then your rotary will work just fine. Um, that is again for the uh, version two of the TLC and then the Euro Rotate. Jungle.